All right, guys, it's that time again. My name is Phil, and it is the MWO Engagement Tournament semifinals and finals matches tonight. Yes, that's semis and final for those that uh, maybe missed that. I'm joined by Rafa Waffle, who will be participating in the next match. What's going on, Rafa? How are you? Man, I just couldn't make it easy for myself. I had to, we had to do well. I had to make it this far in the tournament. I couldn't just uh, sit around all day tonight and cast these matches, but it's okay. I'm excited to be doing both. And either way, I win. I get to go to the finals. I lose. I get to cast the finals. So it's a good day for me, and I'm excited to be here. It should be some great matches. I was going to say, I'm on a dilemma, because if you move on, that means I'm casting by myself, possibly. Hmm. I want you guys <laughs> to actually go, so... I'll be alright on my own. Alright, so anyways... It's a good fight. I'm excited. It is. Uh, first matchup we have of tonight, we have a Steel Jaguar Gaming versus Antares Scorpions. Both teams obviously have made it this far. Both have been exceptionally, uh, you know, doing well, I should say, uh, throughout the, the matches. Uh, yesterday's matches were a little crazy and hectic. Uh, we had uh, Steel Jag... Uh, going up against uh, Fallen 13. Fallen 13 going for a very bold strategy, hiding six spider, five deltas with ER larges in the uh, underneath the uh, uh, dropship in that little uh, tunnel, shut down. And as soon as uh, Steel Jack pushed into him, Magician was the first one. Just hell broke out. It was crazy. They Fallen 13 then rushed to their cap. And uh, luckily, Steel Jag's two light mechs at the time were able to hold off the uh, the cap by placing a few strategic arty strikes and arty um, and, and air strikes, and they pulled that win. We also saw the same thing happen at the end of the night. Um, the same thing with Smoke Adders and Antares Scorpions. Uh, Smoke Adders pushing for the uh, drop um, location, the cap point, and air strikes and arty being used. So. Both teams very familiar across the board with how the, you know, the competitive play works. Um, we've talked uh, a lot, Raffle, about strategies, tactics being used. Let's focus really quick on this match and particularly the rules of this match. It is the semifinals. We're now on Caustic Valley, which changes everything. Not only is the map different, the tonnage now goes up to 720, which we haven't seen since the very first uh, you know round. Uh, it's 20 minutes, and of course, view mode is both, but... Conquest, or uh, Conquest as well, on Caustic Valley, 720 tons. What are your thoughts with that combination? So, uh, it's, a, it's the hottest map we've seen so far, um, which is going to make it interesting. But it's also a very interesting map in terms of the kind of cover we see. Caustic is very wide open compared to, I mean, we've seen Forest Colony, Frozen City, and River City, which not only are very tight maps, there's not much space, but there's a lot of cover as well. And on Caustic, it's very wide open. So you might see uh, some interesting builds. You might see people bringing Lerms. I remember we talked about uh, back in the first round, we talked about probably the most effective map that we would see Lerms on would be Caustic or Crimson. So you might see a team go for Lerms, but it's definitely going to be a completely different kind of game. The conquest is going to mean that you're going to see a lot of active play. Uh, people are going to be fighting for caps, and so if there isn't um, if there isn't one central engagement pretty quick, that means that there's going to be probably a cap war going on because you have to watch out for those caps because it, on a bigger map like this especially, it means that you run the possibility of winning the main fight but having your enemy team escape uh, uh, three cap points up with all of their lights and then you spend the rest of the game hunting them down which can end in a loss in a lot of cases I was going to say Caustic Valley do you think the heat will affect the builds being used I mean we saw a lot of direct fire in the last match we have seen missiles being used by aces and their uh, you know opponent at that time We're, you know does the heat affect the direct fire weapons you know with the two peeps loadouts we see a lot of the times the aces do you see that uh, changing things up? The, so the traditional build that we've been seeing a ton this tournament is the two PPCs AC5s on a lot of those mechs. You can see it on uh, Dragon Slayers, you see it on Cataphracts, uh, Shadowhawks even run uh, two AC5s and an ER PPC, stuff like that. So it's a very common build and it is definitely affected by the heat. Uh, Caustic isn't the hottest map we have, but it's certainly one of the hotter ones. And PPCs are they are hot weapons, they're very, very effective. But you do have to watch out for that heat, especially if you're standing up in the caldera, the center area on Caustic Valley. It makes for uh, very, very difficult heat management. I was going to say, speaking of the map in general, 
because this is conquest, normally I would say on assaults and especially skirmish, most of the battle that occurs on caustic is around the caldera, literally around. Uh, you know, you always go to the right, um, and the enemy team goes to the right usually, right? It's a it's a fa it's a fight over that. Now, because this is conquest and 720 tons, do you think capping is as important as just being able to engage the enemy? I mean. Do you feel that lights are going to play a big role in the cap process, or do you think it's going to be, I've got two caps, you've got two caps, maybe a theta in the middle is going to be the, uh, you know, the point of, you know, where the yeah, teams it, meet? It, you will, you could still see some of that uh, ring around the rosy play that you normally see on assault and uh, skirmish mostly just because people will be trying to buy for caps, so you will... It doesn't necessarily mean that they will. Some players, or some teams, may just not want a cap, and that's okay. They could just go for an engagement or something like that. But lights will play a big role in the fact that you can go for that cap, and it gives you an upper hand in, the ter in terms of it forces your opponent to make the engagement. Uh, it's one of the things that we talked about with the assault matches and skirmish matches. When you get up that one kill, then your opponent is at a disadvantage, and they have to charge you. And it's sort of the same thing in uh, Conquest, where you can force your opponent to come after you, because you are up on caps. So it can hopefully give you a favorable engagement, or you get them on a point for a little while, you drop some arty. I mean, we saw how effective arty was last night. Um, so I, I, I think that caps will play a, a role tonight, but I'm not positive. Obviously, when we saw the last conquest, which was uh, Frozen City Night, it is a small map in general. The fight, because of the tonnage too, you had a lot of mediums, a lot of uh, lights on the field. It's not like you could really pull away from you know the enemy team without them being right on your heels. Something like this, especially when you get in the 720 bracket, what's interesting is it sort of it flips because what happens if the lights of one team and the mediums of one team get knocked out? Um, and then it turns into a cap game, possibly. Maybe that's the other team's last resort, right? That's all they have left, um, and they can string them out. Um, and that, that, is a, that is a fairly classic debate about if you see your opponent's lights capping, do you try and take their lights with your lights, or do you put all of your mechs together and try and push in and brawl with the opponent team, opposing team while they are down those crucial light mechs? Because light mechs can form or uh, create a very favorable engagement in that brawl. You know, speaking of lights, uh, we've seen spiders, five deltas used. We've seen uh, Jenners, we've seen Embers, uh, fire starters, um, we've seen Raven three Ls. Um, for this particular map, jump, jump jets aren't necessarily needed per se. Do you think ECM is needed on this map for the lights? I think that it's helpful. Um, this might be a kind of the kind of map where, because it's hot, you might see people ditching the traditional six medium laser Jenner in favor of something with streaks, just to add uh, confirmed accuracy and a little bit less heat. So you might see people bringing uh, AMS, maybe ECM. We talked a little bit about LRMs, and I think that most people probably have that in mind, that if they were going to use LRMs, this is the map to do it on. So I think that you'll probably see ECM, maybe even AMS, uh, from a lot of mechs, but for varying reasons. I was going to say, I would almost say we might see lights with uh, the ER large, maybe even a cicada with peeps. And the only reason I say that with the ECM factor is I have a feeling they're going to stay close to the big brothers, if you will. Uh, we saw in uh, Frozen City uh, Night, you know, it was light hunters, right? You took a mech that was a light hunter. Well, when you have the big boys with you, you want to be able to do damage at range. You don't want to be up close on them. So, you know, your anti-light deterrent is your your friendlies. And, and I feel like that's maybe what we might see. Raven 3Ls being used or possibly just a Spider 5 Delta to have that jump capability. But the one thing with all those, uh, the caveat is heat. Even the Jenners um, are hot. I would say the best light in this scenario as far as heat dependency would be the fire starter ember just because i mean how powerful it is because it can fire four medium lasers over and over and over again and then it's a uh, you know it's heat neutral with the machine guns and if it just so happens to have a crit you know it just shoots right through the internals and boom the target's out so yeah i think we're gonna see uh the normal uh you know meta possibly being brought to the field but one thing I will say throughout this entire tournament, I've been surprised on multiple drops. Even yesterday, Steel Jack surprised me with some of their mechs they chose. 
Yeah, and before I forget, I have to mention that Siri actually got six kills in that game with Air Arty, something I didn't notice during the cast, but I went and watched the replay afterwards, and he actually laid down an airstrike and an Arty strike and got six kills that match. It was absolutely insane. But, uh, so, and I can make that point relevant, too, by saying that that is something that you have to be, like, watching out for in Conquest, is that you've got to be capping points, or at least, well, if, sorry, if your strategy is to cap, then you have to be careful about air arty because it can really wreck a light pack that's going for a cap. You know, how about the idea that we do have an LRM threat here? It is probably the best map, map to take LRMs. As a team, do you take AMS and ECM? Yeah, I mean, it, I guess I'm not making a question. I'm more making a point of you may just want to take AMS and ECM just to be sure if they do go uh, LRMs, you're not... AMS lists, I guess, you know, I mean, just having, you know, uh, you know, three, four, five mechs with AMS will really negate a lot of the incoming fire, and if you don't have it, man, you just take a punishing, you know, amount of damage. Even if you're doing the, the jump sniping, uh, you know, with uh, uh, Pop-Tarts, you will get hammered by missiles. Yeah, especially, I, I would love to see a team bring like a narc, like a raven with like a narc, an ECM, just sneak around, narc targets, because I have to say, narc is a very effective tool if combined properly with LRMs, and so if we see it, I would be absolutely jacked. I think it'd be, I, think, I don't think it'd be hilarious. I think it'd be effective, and it'd be really fun for me to watch and cast, because not only do LRMs look really cool in the spectator camera, but they are a fun weapon, weapon and they add an interesting dynamic to the game of that constant bombardment until you do something about it. And that's the last thing a Pop Tart wants to have, you know, land on his back. You know, uh, we actually just had an article uh, written uh, by uh, someone that's up on our uh, forums over at No Guts No Galaxy um, about just that. You know, um, embracing the whole being able to use alarms, especially in even in public matches. But we haven't seen any narcs being used, even in the Aces match um, in round one. We didn't see uh, narcs being used, but we saw two awesomes being used and to great effect. Um, and, you know, again, just to go back, if you don't have AMS and you're under fire from LRMs, you feel the full weight of them, and they can be very, very deadly on the right map, on the right scenario. Um, but let's, let's, let's focus really quick. I mean, still Jaguar, they, they're the top of the food chain. They've gone through this multiple times. They know uh, what to do or what to expect, or, you know, for the most part, they, they've been there. They've done that. Um, I feel like what we're going to see is something very aggressive on both sides. I feel like what they're going to do is they're going to take two cap points, push the third, and then they're going to push the agenda. Um, that's what I think they're going to do. They're not going to sit back. They're not going to wait. They're going to always be pushing ahead. And I mean, you know, the same thing with Antara Scorpions. I don't know them as well, but seeing their play yesterday, they were definitely, they were smart about their uh, positioning. They were smart about their movement, and they reacted quickly to that base cap that, uh, you know, the enemies that were trying to pull on them yesterday's smoke adders. So not to, you know, discount those guys. I mean, it's going to be an interesting match across the board. Um, and this could be, this is sort of uh, one of those things, uh, Ruffle, that we talked about. It, all it takes is one or two mistakes, one lucky air strike, one lucky arty strike, a wrong positioning, a light, you know, making one mistake or an assault, and boom, it changes the game. I think uh, some people would be like, oh, well, SJR, you know, you never know. In one of these things, it could easily go the other way, and, you know, we'll see uh, see someone in the finals that maybe some people didn't expect. Yeah, and uh, we have seen SJR playing very, very aggressively in this tournament. Well, they haven't They've been playing tactically as well, though. I don't want to throw out aggressive like they've just been throwing caution to the wind and moving in. Uh, like the, Their match last night is a perfect example. We saw them move up to that upper city area, uh, what a lot of people consider to be a very, very defensible position that you could just stay in. I mean, that's what uh, 228 did in our game. And instead of staying there, they scouted out their opponent, and they decided it was safe to move. And they, they slowly pushed up as a very coherent unit and moved up, and that was when they found those spiders, and that got a little bit hectic after that. But that's one of the things we've seen consistently from SJR in this tournament is very uh, tactical, concise movements. Uh, they make sure that they know what they're doing and where they're going, and they don't like to spend a lot of time in one location. So if we're going to see any team really play the caps or try and play for a fast engagement, I think it's going to be SJR. Um, I'm not as sure about Antares. Um, I think that... <clears throat> excuse me. Ugh. Gotta get that out of my voice before we start casting. 
I think that they might... I'm not sure if they're going to try for a cap game or if they're going to go for an engagement right off the bat. Maybe try and weaken SJR and then go for caps. There are a lot of strategies to employ, and it really depends on kind of what side of the map you get, what mechs you're bringing, things like that, what mechs your opponents end up bringing. The, the adage that all battle plans fail at the first shot, or however that goes, is very applicable in mechware. I was going to say, Caustic Valley is very dynamic, especially when you get to Conquest, uh, the different uh, terrain, being able to move. You're not, it, again, the battle isn't just focused around the Caldera on uh, Conquest, and there's other positions you can take up um, that, uh, you know, strategically, you know, help you. Um, so I think what we might see, again, is battles outside uh, the Caldera. And, of course, if you're fighting inside, that's one of the biggest things is, yeah, you have the high ground, right? But you're also running really hot uh and it's it's like two or three times i don't know the exact numbers but it's it's ridiculous inside the caldera so you definitely don't want to be shooting um too much uh in the caldera but uh, anyways it looks like they are about ready they are both in the lobby getting ready and momentarily we will be kicking off and this is the first of the semifinals and scorpions versus the steel jaguar gaming and uh, this is uh, one of two semifinals matches. After this, we have House of Lords versus 228 IBR, which Roth will be bouncing out of here to uh, go uh, do that. And then, um, yeah, we've got the finals. We have finals. Yeah, so I'm excited. I wanna, I wanna see, uh, wanna see what mechs are gonna be on sale after the finals. First of all, that's gonna be fun. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. No matter, no matter who ends up in the finals, they will have definitely earned their spot, and it will be a terrific final game. So I'm very excited. I was going to say, the winner mechs, right? The winners and their mechs will be on sale after this, uh, just to make a point. That's what he's talking about. Uh, there is information up on mwmercs.com for that. But it looks like we are launching right now, so here we go, guys. All right. Ah, uh, Caustic Valley. And here we go. This is one of my favorite maps. I'm just, I'm just gonna point that out. Canyon is still my favorite for whatever reason. All right, so it looks like Antares Scorpion has spawned on the Sulphur Lake side, and SJR has spawned on the other side by the D3 Ridge. Uh, right off the bat, it looks like we see plenty of Dragon Slayers around SJR side as well as Embers and. I'm pretty sure that dash A1 means a catapult A1, so it looks like we're going to see some lerms, so I'm excited. Alright, right off the bat we see both teams sort of regrouping. We've got um, SJR is sort of is moving their mechs up, it looks like they're going to move towards the back of the caldera. They have brought uh, two embers, a raven 3, oh, sorry, sorry, uh, four embers, a raven 3L, a catapult A1, and then five Dragon Slayers. So they are uh, very uh, min-maxed in terms of weights. Whereas it looks like Antares has brought a mix of Shadowhawks, Dragon Slayers, and uh, I see a Cicada in there as well. And it looks like Antares is moving as quickly as they can right onto Theta. They're trying to get that initial cap point. Whereas SJR has decided to go for the cap point off by the lake and to get their first cap. So look, both teams are going to be at two caps, but we do see an engagement around the Caldera starting off right away. A UAV goes up from each team, and it looks like Antares is going to try and push in to SJR right now. They are pushing over the ridge as we speak. Uh, lots of air already goes down from SJR. Not a ton of significant damage so far, and no mechs have fallen, but this is turning into a brawl very quickly, and these embers are going to be a very big part of that. Embers do a great job of critting out open space, open components on mechs, so they're going to do a lot of work in this fight. We see that Catapult A1 well positioned off in the back, putting down lots of alarms. We see a Shadowhawk go down for Antari Scorpions, that means SJR is up one kill currently. Caps are about even. Uh, two mechs down, four SJ1, whereas, or sorry, four Antares, I don't know why I call them SJ1. Mm, I'm dead. Two mechs down for each side, and a big brawl is breaking out. Um, we see a lot of... These Dragon Slayers are taking a lot of fire. These Embers are doing a ton of work. They are very, very heat neutral, but they do a good job of critting out components. I think they're a very, very good choice for this map. And we see that SJR is, in fact, taking the lead right now. They are up five kills to three over Antares Scorpions. 
this is a pretty this is a good brawl. Antares took took it right to Steel Jag right away. This is uh, they brought a, a much more brawly comp and they're trying to use it. But they are down uh, six mechs remaining to the ten or sorry eight mechs remaining for SJR, and one of those. Dragon Slayers for Antares does go down, putting them further behind. But they're still doing a lot of damage. They're still putting down good hits. A lot of these Dragon Slayers from SJR are fairly hurt. We see a Dwala and a Dragon Slayer at just 77%, and he's getting attacked still by a Light and a couple Mediums. But it looks like just four mechs remaining now for Antares Scorpions compared to six of Steel Jag. And one more goes down for Antares, three to six. This is a close fight still, but these embers are still alive. And one of it uh, looks like legal department is actually at 96%. Uh, Siri is in, in a Raven at 90%. They are very, very healthy. And so these three mechs from Antares are having a hard time putting down fire on the critted components. And another mech goes down, Mongo Bot. I'm going to learn how to pronounce his name someday. Goes down in a Shadowhawk, just two mechs remaining from Antares points it turns out were not a very big factor in this game and we see these machine guns shooting everywhere from SJR and the last mech goes down SJR moves on to the finals that was I have to admit quicker than I was expecting I was gonna say they just dove right in there was no hesitation whatsoever from both sides I mean Antara Scorpions was the aggressor there it worked too. I mean, they they did a lot of damage. All but one of SJR's Dragon Slayers went down. That A1 stayed alive, did 433 damage, which is pretty impressive. I mean, they did a lot of work. It was uh, it was a smart drop deck by SJR, but it was a great play by Antares. That was uh, very well done, and they managed to take uh, six mechs off of SJR, which is SJR is a really good team. It's not to be scoffed at, and I think that. One of their strengths is how quickly they adapt. A lot of other teams you would have seen that rush would have continued like that, would have continued to be a roll. They would have kept losing max, but SGR was able to fall back, regroup. So Embers were able to come in and start doing a ton of damage. I mean, look at the kills. We see two kills from T-Fun, four kills from Legal Department, and two kills from Tweak, and all in Light Max. Buddy, so your Light Max played a very big part in that game. I was going to say, let's go ahead and uh, break that down. We saw an A1. Um, I think what happened at the very start of that map is they went right after the uh, SJR um, Dragon Slayers, knocked them out. Um, Jaeger went down quickly, then a few others. That A1 was on the outskirts the entire time and just